How, how could this migrant crisis be stopped? This is a German far-right pseudo-journalist on the Greek island of Lesbos. He and other identitarians from countries like France, Austria, and the Netherlands have been flocking to the island in recent months. So what brings these people from all over Europe to a small island in the Aegean Sea? Refugees and migrants. The island has become a magnet for Europe's identitarian movement, a far-right nationalist group that's anti-migration and anti-Islam. By following these people, we can trace their connections back to the rest of Europe. And from there, the wide network of Europe's identitarian movement. This investigation, in collaboration with Lighthouse Reports, will show you what that network looks like and how it's fueling nationalist sentiment in Europe. Lesbos has been on the front line of Europe's migrant and refugee crisis since it began in 2015. A deal between the European Union and Turkey to stem the flow of asylum seekers in 2016 turned Greece's islands into a sort of buffer zone, leaving those still on the islands trapped in limbo. The presence of a refugee camp with nearly 20,000 people in it has created increasingly strained relations with those living on their island. That tension escalated into violence with locals against the migrants and refugees, as well as local NGOs this year, in February after the Greek government attempted to expand the camp. These violent confrontations, coupled with Turkey's sudden decision to allow asylum seekers to freely enter Europe, began to attract the attention of far-right groups throughout Europe in early March. With Turkey's encouragement, a new influx of asylum seekers started traveling to Greece, either by its land border with Turkey or by sea to islands like Lesbos. On March 1st, locals attempted to prevent a dinghy with migrants on it from docking at a port on Lesbos. <laughs> migrants, journalists, and UN representatives were attacked in the incident. Not long after, German far-right group made a reference to the attack at a rally in eastern Germany. This is when we start to see an influx of identitarian and other far-right nationalist actors from various European countries start to appear on Lesbos and elsewhere in Greece. It's also when the U.S. State Department releases a travel advisory warning U.S. citizens about traveling to the area. The kinds of white nationalists, neo-Nazis, and far-right types showing up in Greece range from pseudo-journalists to actual politicians. But the goal is the same for all of them, to take advantage of the situation on the island to strengthen their message back home. The problem here is twofold. First, as some of these fringe messages get distributed throughout these groups' networks, they get distilled into the mainstream and translate to empowered nationalist parties throughout Europe. Second, these messages have the potential to resonate with lone wolf-type actors who may turn to violence to stop what they perceive as some sort of invasion. A 43-year-old German national killed nine people on a shooting rampage, most of them of Turkish and Kurdish descent. By drawing white nationalists from all over Europe, Greece, and Lesbos in particular, can demonstrate just how far the network reaches throughout Europe. When the island became a flashpoint for Europe's migration crisis, people from at least six different countries, representing various nationalist groups or political parties, traveled either directly to the island or other parts of Greece. These trips all feed to the broader network of Europe's far right. While some affiliated with France's far right generation identity movement were in Greece, the group also staged anti-migration protests in Paris. Another Belgian movement launched an initiative aimed at helping quote-unquote Greek patriots push back against migrants coming to Greece. Revealing this network shows just how interconnected Europe's various far-right and nationalist movements are. When a new flashpoint like Lesbos flares up, far-right actors from all over Europe travel there to strengthen their movements back home. Even the global coronavirus pandemic is an opportunity. The groups are using it to demonize migrants as vectors for the virus. And if one thing is clear, it's that the far right understands the power of migration as a political issue and how to harness that power to strengthen their message. <laughs>